I got a new toy. Well, actually, this isn't the only thing that I picked up recently. So besides the hand planes, the miter saw, the track saw, the jointer, were all upgrades to tools that I already own. And I thought I'd make the topic of this video to discuss that. When is it time to upgrade your woodworking tools? Now, there are a few different reasons and a lot of reasons really that go into that, but I thought it'd be helpful to show and, and share my experience with each one of those tools and why I decided to upgrade them. So I hope this is helpful. And this is also a different video format that I'm used to producing. So if you like this style and you wanna see more of it, please leave me a comment down below. So this is my 10 inch non-sliding, miter saw, it's made by Rigid and it's fine. It does the job. This was actually a gift from my father when I first moved into our house. So he left me this saw, he left me a jigsaw and a circular saw, which I've upgraded since then as well. And this was the last one of the tools that he left me that I just recently upgraded. Now, it works, like I mentioned, just fine. But the thing about it is that it does just have a limited capacity on how far it can cross cut a board so there's been plenty of projects where i'm trying to cut it and it doesn't go all the way through so i either have to lift up the board towards the end of the cut so the saw can you know finalize the cut there also i find myself constantly trying to adjust the saw so that all the cuts are square and for whatever reason i'm slightly off so what I end up doing is actually using the crosscut sled over at my table saw instead, because I know my blade and everything is square in my table saw. So I'll take this out and I'll take boards and I'll ultimately just cross cut them here. So what's the point of even owning a miter saw if I don't like using it? So it was my birthday recently and I was gifted a few gift cards to uh, one of the big box stores. And I started browsing around and I came across this saw, this Delta Cruiser. And I've been wanting this particular model for a while now. And the reason is, is because it doesn't take up a lot of space back here, just based upon the sliding mechanism it has. So now I don't have to worry about taking out my crosscut sled over at my table saw and I can just set this up and it will work just fine. And my old miter saw has a crosscut capacity of about five and a half inches. Let's take a look at this thing. This one's at almost 11, 11 and a half. So I feel like this is going to help maximize efficiency in the shop where if I have a piece of plywood that's you know right underneath those dimensions, I can just use this instead of having to take out the crosscut sled every time. So those are the reasons why I bought this. Let's talk about the jointer. So if you haven't already, go check out that coffee bar video that I did not too long ago. And I have a full part in there where I tried to use my bench top jointer from Porter Cable, six inches, and it, it does the job, but it can't handle larger material when I pass through it. So I was making the tabletop for that project and I just couldn't get the boards nice and square using that joiner. I have a few upcoming projects that are going to require longer boards and that bench top joiner would not suffice. So as you can probably tell, this is used. It's an older model jet. It's still six inches, but it has a longer bed, a more powerful motor. The, the knives are really sharp and it it's just so much better. I was browsing around probably for a good solid three months on Facebook Marketplace looking at uh, where I live, a hundred mile radius around here. And I finally came across this one. It's probably an hour away from my house. And I messaged them, it was available. I went to go take a look and I bought it. It was $450. Now I'm putting that price out there in some of your areas that might be way too expensive for this jointer. In other areas, it might be just fine like it is here, 
But for me, that was a price that I felt comfortable with just based upon upgrading the one that I already own. And for the amount of time it took me to find one that wasn't garbage really. Before we take a look at the track saw, let me show you the two circular saws that I have and kind of tell you about the story behind them as well. So this was the original. It's a skill saw. Um, and again, this was the other tool that my dad left for me. And it's okay, it's powerful, it's corded, and it does the job, but I always found that this um, bolt that's really connecting the, the blade can never be tightened enough. It always came loose. So at the end of the cut, I would see the blade wobbling around and again, not really safe. And I tried my best to tighten it as much as I could. And this is good. It, it, it gives a lot of power and it cuts through things easily. And I put a new Diablo blade on it and it, it works just fine. But there were instances where I wanted to have something cordless. So I ended up going with this Porter cable. Blade's a little bit smaller. I think it's a six and a quarter or six and a half inches. And this is great. It works for being able to cut something. Like if I needed to take this outside, I could do it. I could cut it. Um, or large panels where I don't want the cord to get in the way. And the issue with this is that the battery is pretty terrible. And the reason why I got a Porter cable is because I have a few other Porter cables and I have a bunch of batteries for it. So I just figured I'd stick with Porter cable. But the reason why I ended up buying a track saw was because of the time that it took me to set up each cut when working with large pieces of plywood. I would have to go into my scrap bin pile. And I know, I know that you could make your own track for a circular saw and that would work but i just wanted something more like designed for it and i know i'm kind of taking the easy way out and i know there's a, a ton of great videos here on youtube that show you how to make them but i like the plunge aspect of things and i just wanted a a good well-known brand powerful saw and i ended up going with this makita right here and you see these pieces of plywood right here? They've been in my shop for probably a solid month or so. I have a project I need to get started on, but I've just been dreading it because I didn't want to take out my circular saw and clamp it down and figure out the distance between the end of the, the blade guard um, base plate and the blade to figure out how much of a difference I needed to move the, the straight edge to be able to get my accurate cut. and. I've just been putting it off. So I ended up just splurging and buying the track saw and now the plywood pieces are still here. But when I find the time to actually start working on it, I'm going to love the, the setup and how easy and efficient that this saw will be when it comes time to working on this project. So I know what a lot of you might be thinking and that is, well, Tim, you, you've got a five, $600 track saw. You paid $450 for that jointer. That miter saw, I think it retailed at 650 and got the 25% discount off of that. I can't afford to just buy all these new tools. Now, I'm not telling you that you need to go out and upgrade all of your tools. I at least wanted to just talk through my experience and the reasoning as to why I upgraded the tools that I have. And to be honest, you know, I make these videos on YouTube and I don't do too many commission projects except for maybe the coffee bar, the cutting board, and a few other things here and there. So the money that I earn from making YouTube videos, and I appreciate all of you who have subscribed and supported me along the way, it continues to allow me to purchase these new cool tools and um, talk about them and use them and make cool projects which I can share and put on YouTube. So. For all of you who have been supportive of my journey, I want to thank you and anyone new watching this. Uh, if you're interested in future videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So I guess that's really all I wanted to cover today, talking about the tools that you already own and maybe they're okay and they get the job done. So how do you know when the right time is to upgrade them? So obviously the cost of the tool would be a consideration, but start thinking about what that cost goes into in terms of your overall workflow in the shop. And my full-time job, I am a, a sales trainer. I have been in sales for a really long time. And the biggest thing when we're selling a product is you need to help the prospect or the potential buyer think about the return on their investment. 
So when you're thinking about upgrading your tools, think about that. So when I have my miter saw and I have two by fours or a, uh, some plywood that I need to cut down and I need to take out my crosscut sled on my table saw and rip it down and I just have a miter saw that's sitting there, I'm thinking about the efficiency that I would gain by upgrading my miter saw and having something where I know it's going to be square and it's going to be easy to set up and I can quickly just have it all ready to go, make the cut and feel confident that that piece is going to be good. And that to me is the return on my investment. So start thinking about all of those other tools that you might have in your shop. And same goes for the track saw, the amount of time it takes me to set up each cut with the straight edge guide. Now I can just take this saw, plop it on the rails that I got, make the cut and be done with it. So that's my advice. Take a look at what you have and see if it makes sense to upgrade them. And if not, and they get the job done and you're perfectly okay with it, that's fine too. So thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.